Good Monday, everybody. Welcome to Charting with Dan. I'm Dan Merle. Joining me, Lon Harris. Thank hey, you hey. for joining me, Lon. Always delighted to chart. So much to get into this weekend. A close call for Avengers Endgame, but it stays at the top of the box office charts. We'll talk about what that means, what it means for Pokemon Detective Pikachu, which had its own notable uh, premiere this last weekend. So much to talk about. Before we start, though, and I, I'm, I'm hoping we have a chance to go into it even more deeply tomorrow on SJU, but mm -hmm. uh, today the news broke that uh, Doris Day who is uh, one of the biggest stars uh, yeah. in the, cl the classic Hollywood era, uh, passed away at uh, the age of 97, 97. years old, which uh, we should all be so lucky to live uh, <laughs> uh, such a long life. Yeah. Uh, but uh, just briefly before we go, I wanted to acknowledge that. You were saying, Lon, and you're right, some of her films, a lot of her films, as they've gotten older, are not remembered in the same breath as the quote-unquote classics. Yeah. I mean, she's a good example of a person who worked amazingly, consistently, did a ton of really popular films in her era, but they're films that are not really as celebrated today by movie nerds. Right. The yeah. films like Pillow Talk with Rock Hudson, sure. which uh, is remembered, but not, you know, is kind of remembered as a camp or, right. or a romance. But Doris Day was such a massive star. Uh, worked with Hitchcock, uh, the, the Man Who Knew Too Much, yeah. the remake, Hurts, the case Sera Sera from that movie. That was one of the biggest hits. I mean, she mm -hmm. was a, a, a massive star. Yeah, and for years and years. And, and yeah, I mean, comedy, like she was the most famous female film comedian of her day. Yeah, music, television, uh, movies, everything. So uh, sad day, uh, Doris Day passing away at 97 years old. If you haven't seen any of her work, I, I do recommend, look look it up. Um, she was a truly a very, very uh, popular, bright, yeah. shining star in Hollywood for, for many, many years. Yeah, we were just talking about the the thrill of it all with James Garner. Like mm -hmm. a lot, of, she's in a lot of movies like that from the 50s and 60s that were big hits in their time that just haven't, for whatever reason, don't get on the AFI lists and aren't sort of as remembered today is the, yeah. the classics. And also someone who chose in, in the later years of her life to go into activism. Uh, she's very passionate about animals. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think a large reason too, because she did not uh, do as much as far as in ca on camera, in, in front of the camera stuff in her later years, yeah. perhaps uh, many people not aware of her, but uh, look up Doris Day, <laughs> one of the biggest uh, movie stars in the world. Yeah, uh, at I mean, one time. synonymous with being a movie yeah. star in the 50s yeah. and 60s. Um, so rest in peace, Doris Day. Um, let's move on to th today's uh, <laughs> the box charts. office. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the charts of the day. Uh, Avengers Endgame, number one for a third week at the top of the box office charts. Just about Pokemon Detective Pikachu. Avengers dropped 57% this week, it's third week. Now that is a steeper drop. A lot of people have been throwing, as happens, it's very frustrating, but a lot of people have been throwing around the box office numbers going into this weekend about uh, Endgame and, and what its drop means. It, it dropped about 57%. That is a steeper drop than Infinity Wars, which a lot of people throw around like, it's cr crumbling right. compared to Infinity Well, Those are the memes. What, yeah. Those are the memes. <laughs> Uh, strangely, so so many of the sources going back to the ones that I cited in my Captain Marvel video. Huh. It's odd yeah, how odd. sometimes weird out of context information traces back to the same places. Um, yes, it did drop 57%. That is a, a steeper drop than Infinity War's third week uh, numbers. However, it should be noted that Infinity War got one more week of play before its Ryan Reynolds fronted competition oh, came out. Right, yeah. uh, it, it got uh, to. Uh, one extra week of release before Deadpool 2 opened. So at this point in its release cycle, Infinity War did not have major in-market competition, yeah. whereas Endgame this week had Pokemon Detective Pikachu to contend with. So yes, the drop was a little bit steeper as far as that goes. But as always, there are some other factors to talk about. However, later in the show, we are going to look at how Endgame is doing compared to the other films that it opened that opened big, the top five openings of all time, because there are a few things that we should talk about sure. as far as The Force Awakens and Endgame <laughs> and everything else. Uh, but for this week, Endgame still on top, Lon. Not and, too bad. And thank goodness. I was getting worried. I was worried about it. I was worried that it was really just going to kind of drop off the, the map. And, fizzle out. Uh, fizzle you know. out without really making much of an impact. So I'm glad that it was <laughs> yeah. able to, to stay on top. It has now entered. We talked about how last week it was one of the top five 
all-time global grocers. It is now one of the top five all-time domestic grocers. It is now the thir third highest grossing film oh, of wow. all time domestically, passing uh, the other two Marvel movies, uh, <laughs> Infinity War and Black Panther. It's now number three. It is soon going to pass Avatar for number two. And then Star Wars The Force Awakens will be the only thing left in its path at number one. So we're going to talk about that in a second. But first, as always, what I like to do is throw a little context into it. Let's look at in-game if you adjust for inflation. And I know some people say, why should you adjust to inflation? It's never equal. The marketplaces will never be equal. It's never, it, this, just, this, yeah. just, it's, this is an academic exercise. There, there <laughs> does seem to be this desperation online in some way to like, we're going to get the perfect point of comparison where these things are completely it's even. Not, it's just, you can't. Unless you, know? you have a time machine right. and can retroactively release every movie ever made on the same exact weekend in the same exact year, uh, uh, for every single movie, yeah. we will never have a one-to-one -one historical. It, this is this yeah. is just purely a historical and academic comparison. Yeah, it can't. It's, <laughs> it's never going to be like the Clegane Bowl. No, where we can just pit the two competitors no. against each other and say, "Go for it." Let's look. This is just if all the dollars were the same in all of history, this is where Endgame would fall right now. Number the twenty-fourth highest-grossing film of all time, adjusted for inflation, it wow. has passed The Godfather sure. and Jurassic World. It's just behind Fantasia and The Graduate, which a lot of people <laughs> don't realize. Not only was The Graduate a classic movie, it was a massive hit. Of yeah. course, many of those, particularly Fantasia. Fantasia, particularly Fantasia, have benefited from re-releases over the years. Sure. Fantasia, actually, when it was initially released, not a huge hit. Right. And then people realized that um, you can do a lot of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and that it's movie takes on a whole reason. well it's a big reason yeah. and go yeah. go back and look at the marketing the promotional materials for how Disney marketed when it re-released Fantasia in like the 60s yeah mm. Works. That's exactly what they were going for. <laughs> so, uh, yes, of course, re-releases, etc. But it is right there between Fantasia and Jurassic World. Currently, once it passes $800 million, which it will, it's going to have movies like Raiders of the Lost Ark and Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Yes, it was that big of a hit. Mm -hmm. uh, we it, lined In up. addition to re-releases and yeah. stuff, 3D, all that fun stuff in its sight. So we'll keep tracking where it goes as far as inflation. But I wanted to look at... The domestic record, and and which is currently held by Star Wars: The Force Awakens, and how a release schedule and a release pattern can affect what it is. Because when we saw the the, the opening weekend, it's like, oh my God, look how far it opened! 110 million dollars ahead of The Force Awakens. Let's look at the comparison, and and it, it kind of shows how, depending on what time of year you open a movie what that can mean for your bottom line growth. So first, let's look at the top five. This is the graphic that we showed you the Monday after uh, Endgame opened. The opening weekend, top five opening weekends of all time domestically. Endgame, number one, $100 million above Infinity War, $110 million above Star Wars The Force Awakens. Uh, still a mind-blowing number. Yeah. But this is the difference between a movie like Star Wars. I was looking today at, with The Force Awakens. The next movie to open over $50 million, which uh, Detective Pikachu just did in Endgame's third week of release, mm -hmm. the next movie to open over $50 million after The Force Awakens opened was Deadpool. Mm -hmm. That was in February. That was uh, two, two months, months after yeah. the movie opened, as opposed to the because it's a different release cycle for Endgame, three weeks into its run, you have another $50 million opening. Yeah. $50 million plus opening uh, release. Let's look now at those same five movies and their domestic gross through 17 days. And what you see is The Force Awakens being open in the holidays has allowed it to run up and really in comparison, huge numbers compared to Avengers Endgame. As a matter of fact, ever since last the, the, the end of last week, going into this past weekend and parts of last week as well, the daytime grosses and the weekend grosses have been Far and above what Endgame was pulling in, because this is this is still at its point in its, in its release schedule. The Force Awakens is running in late December, early January. Yeah. People are still on holiday break. People are still away from school. You have New Year's Eve. You have New Year's right. Day. It's still running up massive grosses in places, opportunities that Endgame doesn't have. So if you look now, even though Endgame opened 110 million dollars ahead of The Force Awakens, it is now. Uh, $20 million behind what both movies had made at this point in their release. Obviously, there's still a huge gap between Infinity War, The Last Jedi, <laughs> and Jurassic World. But the other thing to note, if you look at their... this is the, These were their total grosses through 17 days. 
for The Force Awakens, its opening weekend was only a third of that total gross. So The Force Awakens opening weekend, 66% of the money made through 17 days was made after its opening weekend. Look at Avengers Endgame. Almost half of its money was made in the opening weekend. And then the rest of that total has been made afterwards. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us, number one, that the idea that it's going to overtake The Force Awakens domestically, which seemed like a pretty sure thing the weekend that it opened, is now looking like it's not such a sure thing. And what it's showing us is that Endgame may be a little more front-loaded than we'd originally thought. You'll remember when we were sitting here the last couple of weeks, mm-hmm. but particularly after it opened, we were talking about, okay, Endgame had this massive opening. Is the rest of its gross going to be as proportionately large, meaning right. is it going to stay as big as it opened, or is this going to be a huge opening that tapers off a little bit as we go because we're going into the summer movie season? It's looking now a little bit, or actually more than a little bit, like that's what it's going to be, is yeah. that Endgame had a massive opening, but that's actually going to constitute more of its total gross proportionally than a lot of other films, meaning it's going to be tough now for it to catch The Force Awakens as the highest grossing domestic film of all time. Yeah, I mean, if you think about something like The Force Awakens, it's the beginning of the series. I think people felt like, I've got the whole the whole season to go see this. If I mm-hmm. wait a week or two, it'll still be there waiting for me. Whereas, mm-hmm. and I mean, obviously, among nerds, there's always spoiler concern. But yes. Endgame was, was so shrouded in that you have to see it right away or it's going to be ruined for you. Yeah. And I think that might have motivated a lot more people to go right away that first weekend. Well, and it was also the options that you have in theaters. Number one, with the Christmas holidays, you have, uh, you know, the end of the year holidays. Yeah. You have... Other options, yes, but you have much more time to go and see them. And then once you get into January, if you look at the competition that Force Awakens was facing in the later weeks in its run, it was movies like Ride Along 2, The Revenant. They all made a lot of money. It's not that there were no other films that did well, but these were not, number one, direct competition to it in the sense that they're in the same, they're operating in the same marketplace. I think that Detective Pikachu is overlaps a little more yeah i think that looking into this week john wick chapter three godzilla aladdin these movies that are coming down compete directly a little more um and also it's it's just that's that's the difference in release window Mm -hmm. that's why avatar is able to rack up the kind of grosses it did that's why the force awakens is able to rack up that kind of gross so it does look like it's the first signs that we're seeing of endgame showing a sign that it was a little bit front-loaded uh, that that opening is not going to be proportional to its final gross. And the certainty, I certainly was fairly confident that it would be able to pass yeah. The Force Awakens. But when you look at the day-to-day gross, and just it's just been getting pounded because of the difference between a weekday during late December, early January, and a weekday between uh, during late April to early May. Right. Um, it's It's a huge difference. It's a massive difference. Yeah. I mean, you can just think about, you know, when you're around Christmas, how much more people are going to see movies every day than, yeah. you know, now, the middle of a normal work week. So we're going to keep tracking Endgame and The Force Awakens. It is going to pass Avatar domestically to become the second highest grossing movie of all time. The question is, it, it needs it needs a little bit over $200 million more to, to catch The Force Awakens. Looking into the jaws of the summer movie season, yeah. we've got we've got five days until Wick three. Yeah, uh, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tall order. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a tall order. We'll see what happens. Let's look at the rest of the top five. As we mentioned, uh, Pokemon Detective Pikachu opened fifty four point three million dollars. However, that final number is about four million dollars lower than the estimate that Warner Brothers had sent yesterday. And those numbers that you see on Sunday. Are, are what a studio is usually looking at. They're looking at what a movie has been doing, and the, the way the reason they, the, that they can send them out on Sunday is that gross for Sunday is an estimate of what they think the movie is going to do based, yeah, based on what on it did it. the day before. So the fact that Detective Pikachu, a $4 million difference between the estimate and the final is actually fairly substantial for a movie. They're usually $1 or $2 million off. Um, the fact that Pokemon came in $4 million lower than the estimate could also be an indication maybe that Warner Brothers estimated a bigger gross yesterday than they got, which we'll, we'll look next week. That is the first sign that maybe Pokemon is a little front-loaded, that a lot of their audience came out on Friday and Saturday so much so that even the estimated audience for Sunday wasn't as big as they thought mm. it was going to be. Maybe. We'll, we'll find out. We'll find One out. One more weekend. Uh, but 
it did it did a couple of things. First of all, they, we everyone always talks about the video game curse, the sure. curse of the video game. <laughs> well, as far as openings domestically go, um, it broke the curse in that Detective Pikachu was the number one really? video game adaptation mm. opening of all time. It beat out now. If you adjust for inflation, <laughs> of course. Lara Croft would still be number one. But on a straight dollar basis, Pokemon Detective Pikachu, the highest domestic opening for a video game adaptation, topping Lara Croft, Tomb Raider, Angry Birds, Rampage, and Pokemon, the first movie, way wow, back when. That, the original one. The original one. That wow. one did huge numbers. Um, I yeah, if you, recall. if you adjust, obviously, Lara Croft's going to be up there above. But still, a strong opening in a genre that doesn't get a lot of strong openings, if I'm being honest. No. Now, I mean, the, the buzz around this one, too, a lot better than the average uh, video game movie. Usually, we kind of know before they even hit theaters that it's, you know, a miss. Not too good. Yeah. The, the Assassin's Creed of it all. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, not great. Yeah. Not well, a great could, movie. Yeah. Well, the, this one at least had some positive buzz. People like the trailers. The characters seem to sort of work in this world. Like, just a lot more positive going into the weekend than I think most video game inspired movies. Yeah. And for Ryan Reynolds, this was his first, uh, if you look at his top five openings, it is the one thing that breaks up the comic book comic oh, bookiness of it all. It's the only non-comic book one. Domestic openings for Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool, Deadpool 2, X-Men Origins, Wolverine, and Green Lantern. I made sure to put the background as the one that I'm sure Ryan Reynolds would want sure. to represent his, his theatrical the career. The Lanterns, yeah. The Lanterns, naturally. Uh, yeah, uh, Detective Pikachu just edging out Green Lantern as the fourth highest uh, opener of Ryan Reynolds' career. It's it's been so long since Wolverine came out. It's it's easy to forget how big that movie opened when it came out. Like people that were really it. primed for more Hugh Jackman Wolverine and Gambit. And g- people were ready for that <laughs> yeah, Gambit. Yeah, finally ready to see Gambit. I keep forgetting that Gambit was yeah. actually in an X Men movie. They really tried. They, they did. They, they really tried with that one. They did their and best. Leave Shriver plays Sabretooth in that movie. Yeah, and he's yeah. actually he's good. The opening to X Men Origins Wolverine <laughs> is really good. Yeah, um, there's a lot good. They're, in that they're movie. like the the special ops group, right? Isn't that it? Well, he well they like he and he and Sabretooth are like fighting through the, the like the wars. Or, like, yeah. they're, they're there in the Civil War. Right. Yeah, like it's yeah. crazy. The, the opening, it's kind of like Watchmen. The opening is great, and then afterwards it gets Just, a little yeah. dicey, or a lot dicey in the case of Wolverine. Yikes. Okay, let's look at the rest of the top five. The Hustle opened at number three. That's actually pretty good. There's a little bit above expectations, although B minus cinema score, mm. not a good uh, not a good news for a comedy, which is largely yeah. rely, reliant on word of mouth. I, I did go see The Hustle this weekend. Oh. Ooh, boy. No? Well, it... Uh, I've... I, have you ever have you ever been in a theater watching a comedy where just nothing lands? Oh sure. Um, that's <laughs> that was my experience with the hustle where it, it's it, people weren't actively disliking it. It was just like the, the jokes were flying and they were just all going. It's a real so, shame because Dirty Rotten Scoundrels is delightful. Yeah, I don't know. I that was it was I, I didn't like it. I was not I was not a fan. I just and and and, and you have great. I, I like Anne Hathaway. I like Rebel Wilson. They're both very good. The yeah. personalities there. It's not that they're bad in it. It's it's the writing really. Mm-hmm. It's just a. It's it was not a, not a strong script unfortunately. So I I, I don't know how long the hustle is going to be hanging around. Uh, two movies that did hang around pretty well though were Intruder, The Intruder, and Long Shot at number four and number five. They both dropped around just a third from mm-hmm. last weekend. So that's a sign that both of those films have fairly strong word of mouth uh, with their audiences. Of course, The Intruder, it's great for them because their budget was was way lower. Long Shot, it's really kind of mitigating the damage a little bit, unfortunately, because right. yeah. that's such a higher budget. And then two other films, uh, Palms with Diane Keaton and uh, Tolkien with Nicholas Holt, the uh, J.R. Tolkien film, uh, both didn't really find the audience they were looking for. Boy, that Tolkien... The the, the 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 I don't know I, I haven't seen the movie but the marketing was very strange to me. Did you see they had a whole trailer that was just him correcting a professor on how to pronounce his name? I did not see that. It's a whole that's a whole clip. That's the whole trailer. Is the guy's like uh, Mr. Tolkien? He goes, mm, it's it's Tolkien. End of trailer. It's like well, I don't I don't know if that's going to necessarily get people out there. Maybe show an orc or something. <laughs> 
But I don't know if there's are there orcs there. I don't think there are orcs. They he wrote them. Orcs. That's true. He did write them. They should have just put footage from Lord of the Rings in the trailer. Yeah, and then, just something. I mean, yeah. if you're making that movie, you're not thinking I should do like one fantasy scene where he imagines he's in Middle Earth just mm-hmm. for the trailer. Yeah. Pretty much. You got Smart. it. You put got it. Hobbit in or something. Uh, I didn't get a chance to see it. I want to. I want to check it out. I'm just curious. I'd like and to I, check it out. I like Nicholas Holt. I think he's a good actor. I he love was great a, in the from favorite. about a boy, the favorite, Mad Max. Uh, I'm just a fan of his. Uh, yeah, uh, I like his work. Uh, let's look t- top per theater. We go back to the smaller films, and I like I like featuring the smaller films. I know we gave Avengers Endgame a little bit of coverage because it needed it, but uh, it's a box office. Show. This is a smaller <laughs> film that hit the per theater average in just five theaters. It's called The Biggest Little Farm. It is a story of a California couple and their journey to revitalize a patch of land, turning it into a self-sustaining farm. He's a, an Emmy winner, documentarian, mm. who documented eight years of his uh, his and his wife's life wow. uh, trying to s- build this farm on this dusty patch of land. Uh, I have not seen it, but Neon was handling the distribution. They picked it up on the festival circuit. That's commitment, so I'm glad they're doing well. Oh, yeah, eight years. That's, eight you years. figure by year six, the wife is like, eh, are you still filming us? We, yeah. And is this, can we wrap this up, please? Yeah. Um, I, I definitely want to check it out. Small number of theaters, but if it's around you, it took the per theater average, so check it out. They, I was reading an article about how they turned down an offer, actually, for Netflix to buy them because mm-hmm. they thought that Neon, who I love, I love Neon as a distributor. Sure. Oh, they, yeah. they pick up some really interesting movies. Uh, had a great plan for them, and good start. Per theater average winner. So many of these films get you get bought by Netflix, you get that payday, but then it gets dumped on Netflix and no one can ever find it again. Crazy Rich Asians being the the most notable one that that turned down a Netflix payday to risk it become a theatrically huge, yeah, and that. it paid off for them. So Netflix not always the best choice for right, everything. Well, because we've even talked, it's been a big topic of discussion, not to sidetrack us, yeah. but uh, Wandering Earth, which we talked about mm-hmm. last week. Huge international blockbuster. You're going to see it on, the, the top, on this next chart. And yet it is sitting on Netflix in the U.S. right now undiscovered. They're not featuring it. It's nope. not on the front page. You have to watch this show so we can tell you to go find to go it. Watch, yeah. It's not going to be on this chart, but it's going to be on a chart in a second. Yeah, it's, I enjoyed it. it. There's I so it much on Netflix. Fun. I don't even know how they get the word. Out. I get an yeah. I get an email every day from Netflix, but it's like you email me fifteen times. How do I know right. that you really think I would want to watch this? So show? yeah, if you're making a movie like this that you've poured yourself into for eight years, I I get it. It's a yeah. payday, but it's also like, well, we're just going to be in the midst of this library that's endless. Yeah. So uh, yeah, biggest little farm, perhaps in a theater New Year, but. Probably not. If you live in a major market. If you live in a major market, (laughs) New York or Los Angeles. Let's look outside of New York and Los Angeles. Let's look worldwide. Avengers Endgame, as we mentioned, number one. Also, barely, just uh, Eakin, barely wow. edging out Pokemon yeah. there. Detective Pikachu gave him a real run for their money, but uh, opens up number two just behind Endgame. A lot of international Pokemon fans. I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, there are. However, I, w- I was reading that it actually did below what they thought it would do in China. It had a China, its Chinese opening, mm. and they were thinking 50 $60 million. It actually did about 40 They're mm. talking about the fact that this is the second Warner Brothers title in a row after Shazam to go out in China and sort of disappoint disappoint yeah. a little bit. So uh, hmm. some people estimating that Pokemon may have even had a better opening uh, worldwide, but still $150 million. It's going to need to keep that audience because that's its budget was about 150 so you're yeah. going to need to get a gross around 450 Five. I know that sounds crazy, but that's a brown what you're going to want to get with with a marketing push as big as theirs. Well, especially because they're hoping that this turn, they don't want to just make one Pokemon movie. They want to make 50 Pokemon yeah. movies, exactly. <laughs> so they're going to want to keep on to their audience, uh, keep their audience hooked on that, keep them coming back to see this movie so they can make more movies. Uh, but we mentioned Avatar. Yep, there we go, the top five. Uh, the Hustle, number two, uh, comedy there. C- C- Capernaum. Uh, again, yeah. in China, remaining a, a surprise draw, $8.3 million in its second week. That's just in China. The the foreign, the foreign international, I love that they changed the name, the, the soon-to-be international film nominee right. at the Oscars. Uh, continuing to draw audiences in China, and then long shot, that's largely driven by its uh, domestic gross. Not a lot of worldwide right. so far on long yeah, shot. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually wondering if the comedy angle hurt Detective Pikachu. Like, instead of just making a straight adaptation of the games, yeah. they kind of tweaked it, made it a little more... More personality, but it may not have played as well. I don't know. To global viewers. I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm always curious just how things it. play in different markets because it did yeah. feel a little. My take when I was reviewing it was that it felt a little broadened. They had sort of broadened it out a little bit, perhaps mm-hmm. to maximize the audience, and right. maybe that paid off. Maybe it didn't. We'll see how it continues to do. Avatar and Endgame. This is the thing we're tracking. 
till the wheels forever. fall off of it forever. <laughs> uh, every week we're looking at how Endgame and how Avatar are comparing to each other. Endgame is now just under three hundred million dollars, depending. On, there's always ten, twenty million dollar variants in different sources, but about three hundred million dollars behind Avatar for the top highest grossing global film of all time. Those percentages are still pretty much the same. They haven't really changed. We haven't seen an increase in market share from other markets. China's still wrapping about 25% of Endgame's total gross. Uh, China just about spent a little bit more coming out of China, but not a whole lot. U.S., we talked about what is it going to do? Is it going to reach $900 million? But it still represents about 20... Can you go back to the former JT? About 29% of the gross. So, um, yeah, it's... we. It, Again, the, the question remains. It, it hasn't fallen off a cliff to the point where we're going to say, like, well, it's definitely not going right. to gonna catch up with Avatar. However, as we just saw, it didn't bury Pokemon uh, Detective Pikachu. That opened strongly up against it. We have plenty of other films coming out which have the ability to open up strongly against it. So $300 million. It's a lot. We say it every week. It doesn't <laughs> seem like a lot. Um it's 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 holding well enough to still have a shot at it, but it really is going to depend week by week how strong does it play against this competition, how many people are going to keep going back and right. seeing it. Um, there's there's no proof to definitively say it's absolutely going to do it or there's no way it's going to do it. It continues to track so that it's a possibility, but certainly not at this point an impossibility or i would say a probability it's yeah. a wait and see it's a, it's tough it's tough it's it's, it's no but no other movie has gotten close in 10 years cuz it's a tough record to, it's a to tough beat. record to beat especially yeah. in the busiest movie uh, season of the year so we will continue to keep avatar watch going uh, here on avengers <laughs> As we entertainment <laughs> network <laughs> aen Avatar Watch. We Avatar get a graphic? Watch. JT, make a graphic. Yeah, we need to make a graphic that says Avatar Watch. Let's look at 2019 worldwide. Nothing changed. It's all the oh. same. There's The Wandering there Earth. It's $700 million. It's on million Netflix dollars. right now. Netflix just snuck out, just <laughs> threw out there with no fanfare. No $700 fanfare million at all. it made. They and like then, people don't like subtitles, I guess. I I don't know. It's like double. It's like two. It's a double Shazam. It's double Shazam. That's Just what they should put on. Put, wondering pull it up I, on your big TV. You don't need. You don't even need the subtitles. Honestly, you, it's, there's nothing in this movie. You, that you really don't. It's, you, it's the, just, Earth is strapped to some rockets. Yeah. There's Jupiter. It's if you like spectacle and big yeah, blockbusters. Everything's frozen and exploding and crumbling all around everybody all the time. It's insanity. And if that's the kind of thing that you like, check it out. You can you literally you could you could finish this episode <laughs> you're, you're and watch it right it. this second. You yeah you you're already paying for it. You're losing money by not watching it is what we're saying. It's true. Uh, it's the third highest grossing movie of the year globally after Avengers Endgame and Captain Marvel. Everything else pretty much stays in the same place. How to Train Your Dragon, Alita, Shazam, Dumbo, two other Chinese films, Crazy Alien, and Pegasus. Us. Uh, you're going to start seeing movies jumping into here. Yeah. Uh, Pokemon. Soon. Uh, <laughs> soon. Um, Godzilla, perhaps. Soon. Maybe. We'll see yeah. how John Wick Aladdin. does. Aladdin. Yeah. You're gonna, by the end of May, that chart, I think, is going to look yeah. differently. A lot different than it does. Let's look at the 2019 domestic chart. Avengers Endgame, it's also the same. These are the, uh, again, <laughs> Detective Pikachu is going to be up there uh, pretty sure. soon. It's going to yeah. knock Alita off the 2019 chart. Um, yeah, at the end of May, this is also going to look a lot different. This is this is the calm before the storm. We yeah. knew that Avengers Endgame was going to jump in there and knock one off and be at the top. But this is a, a lot of these movies have been with us for a long while. The Upside, Us, still yeah, hanging the, in there. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of just, Upside is a January Glass. release. Glass is hanging on there. Yeah. Like these are these are what I like to call our early year buddies. Right. Uh, we're gonna have to start <laughs> yeah. saying goodbye to them one by mm -hmm. one pretty soon. Lego soon. Movie Two. Yeah. Uh, how to train your dragon eventually but uh, yeah these are early these are january february march buddies that yeah. are hanging around they're, they're, they're nice to love them You've grown to love them they're going to be blessed, replaced by some really anno annoying other ones <laughs> sure. uh, that we don't like as much but that you know Almost definitely that's life right also looking at the summer movie season because we are officially in the summer movie season according to hollywood uh with avengers in game we do not i do not count in the summer movies some people do i don't let's look at the summer movie report a few new entries tolkien as we mentioned came out palms mm -hmm. the hustle pokemon detective pikachu debuts at number one 
There you Top, go. The best movie of the summer. Sorry, Dennis Quaid. You had a good run. You were oh, up there for one week, but you've now... a weird smile. Yes. You've <laughs> now been bumped down to... He does have a weird smile, doesn't he? In that, on that poster, it's terrifying. It's, he is a terrifying man. Not as terrifying as his brother. Uh, Pokemon Detective Pikachu, number one movie for who knows how long. We'll see. That's the summer movie report for now. That's going to start filling in. I love the, without Avengers, it's really it's kind of a wild card chart. I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing how that fills out through the summer. If you want to see what we picked for the summer predictions, oh, you can jump over to Screen Junkies, and we have our 2019 summer movie prediction show. Myself, Gray J- uh, Drake, and Jacqueline Coley, and Hal, as always, picked our top 10 summer movies domestically. Yeah, it's yeah. a fun, it's a fun show. It's one of my favorites. It's um, always fun. And yeah, I like that you get to compare at the end and see who who was right and who was wrong. Yeah, we come back at the end of the, mm-hmm. September and then we, we we compare our notes and we crown a winner. Yeah. Salon so opening this week, we have uh, the number one movie of the summer, A Dog's Journey. Speaking of Dennis Quaid, right? That's right, another Dennis Quaid. Dennis, this is the summer of Quaid. <laughs> this is the this Quaid is on. Quaid summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, A Dog's Journey. Here's the thing. There's only three movies, which means that next week, 20% of the summer movie uh, chart right. will, be, will be dominated by Quaid-centric, Dennis Quaid. Yeah. It will be very Quaid-centric. A Dog's Journey opens. Thank mm-hmm. you. I didn't even recognize that. Very Quaid-centric. A Dog's Journey. The Sun is also a star, which some people have pegged as perhaps a sleeper hit right. based on a book that's very popular. Right. Yeah, um, and then the big one that uh, a lot of people are pegging based on what... Uh, Stay with me. Based on what happened with Detective Pichu, a lot of people are pegging John Wick Chapter 3 as the movie that will take Avengers take Endgame title, off yeah. the number one top of the charts. What do you think, Lon? Ooh, uh, I think I think it's going to get there. I think people are I think people are hyped for John Wick. I feel like there's a there's a lot of buzz around this franchise. I think uh, obviously very R rated, mm-hmm. so that that is a that comes into play. It, it's a big disadvantage versus something like Detective Pikachu, which anybody can go see. Yeah. But I still think on its fourth week, I think John Wick takes the title. It's, I wouldn't bet against John Wick ever. Well, against, never, never bet against John Wick. That's that. If there's anything these movies have taught us, it's d- yeah. not to bet against John it's Wick. It's also great. I've seen it. It's terrific. It's really yeah. fun. The, very are, much in line with the other two movies. The reviews have been very, very strong, very positive. Um, you can catch my review here on Fandom Entertainment. I liked it. It was I think it was my least favorite of the three, oh, but yeah. but but I also enjoyed it. Yeah. So it's like it's it's sort of like what's your least favorite of the three born movies? Like you pick one, but you they, they're, they're, all they're, all, they're all good. So yeah, it's my least favorite of the three, but I enjoyed it. We'll find out next week here on charting. See what happened with John Wick Chapter Three. Can it be the Avengers Slayer? Will the, will the Baba Yaga sneak <laughs> in and bump Avengers Endgame down to number two? Or will the Avengers stay strong for a fourth week at the top of the charts? Hard to do in the summer movie season. We'll find out next week. Until then, thanks for joining me. Lon Harris. Always a pleasure. Thank you for watching. See you next time.